Howdy folks. Let's go over some of the options in the configuration fi file for WebDriver IO. First, you'll see here, this is on the WebDriver IO website. You have host, port, and path. If you watched the previous videos, we haven't done anything with these because we haven't had to change any of the defaults. The defaults are localhost, port 4444, and the path of WD hub. For the most part, you don't need to change those. Let me show you partly what those are doing. So if you remember, we st we're using Chrome driver for everything. So when we started, we specified the port of 4444, which WebDriver automatically listens on, WebDriver IO, the URL, URL base WD hub. So we've done that and then it defaults to localhost. So we haven't, we didn't need to define these for any of our things. Um, so if you needed to, I don't know, for, if you're using Gecko driver, I think Gecko driver is the, the path um, defaults to just the root. So instead of the WD hub, so that you would just have that, you would just have the root like that. Uh, if you're running it on like Sauce Labs or Browser Stack, you don't need to worry about that either, any of these either, because it'll figure it out for you. The only time you'll need to really use these for the most part is if you're running a, a private Selenium backend or some kind of grid or something like that. All right. So next up, you have a user and key. This can be used for a third party service like Sauce Labs or Browser Stack. What they will do is is they will provide you a user and a key that you specify. And WebDriver IO will automatically take care of all the rest for you. Next thing, let's go over. There's a specs option. Let's go over to our config file. All right, so we've got our config file. So let's go to all right specs. Specs are the path where we are specifying all of our tests. So we've specified tests star, and this just takes a glob pattern with the star there. Um, so this will look for any of that. So one thing that this does is when you run, let's see if I have, when you run without the dash s spec, no, no. When you run without the dash s spec, it's gonna use this here, this path, and run all of the tests in this directory that matches this. And also when you do specify dash s spec, you can just specify a full path to a file, which is fine. Or if you want, you can specify a part of a file. Like let's look for mocha chai.test.js. We can just do, we can just do that and it'll, it'll find the file for us or this, the test to run because it's looking it's looking for any files in here that match Mocha and Chai. All right. You can also exclude files if you wanted to. The same same concept in the specs. Just specify either a full path or a, a, or a certain match on what you want to exclude. Um, suites. You can specify suites. You see here, a specified browser and login. So if we want to just, just test our login, so maybe like a developer made a change to the login screen or something like that. Maybe you had, you have, you know, two or 3000 tests and you don't need to run all those tests. You just want to run just the login ones. So you can, you can group whatever tests are for the login. You can also do a glob pattern as well. So you could do something like tests, maybe you had a login directory and something like that. So then any, any files within the login directory would get ran whenever that spec is ran or whenever that suite is ran. And to run the suites, you can do it just like we did with the, the dash dash spec. You can do dash s suite and specify the suite to run. So sometimes maybe you'll do that in your, in your continuous integration system where developer makes a change and they don't, you don't need to run the whole, every single test in, in the system, but maybe you just need to run tests based on what they changed. 
So that, that's where the suites can come into handy. Then we have Max Instances. What Max Instances does is how many tests will run at one time. So you can have a bunch of tests run in parallel. So you, you can have, if we got here, so we have, we have it set to 10, 10 instances right here. This could run all of these at the same exact time. If you're running it on your own computer, it, your computer probably can't handle 10, 10 instances because what that does is it spins up 10 new um, browser instances. You, you'll want to have this set, set to 10 in your continuous integration environment, most likely. Um, but if you're just developing locally, mo most of the time you just want to have it to one. So you have it to one. Next is capabilities. Capabilities is where you define your, your browser options. So we've been working with Chrome, which is great. We can use that. Um, we can also specify Firefox in here as well. So let's, let's just add Firefox. So we can just do this. And I'll go over the max instances in just a second instead of here. So what this will do is this will run in Chrome and Firefox, assuming we have the correct drivers running in the background. We've been using Chrome, so this wouldn't work because we've only got Chrome, the Chrome driver running. I'll go into more of being able to run Firefox and Chrome at the same time in a different video. Um, but the capabilities, this will also take extra options as well. So the max instances here, this is overriding this max instances up here. So here we're just setting it to one. It's fine. So let's set that to five. And we can set this to five as well. And so what would happen now is since we have two capabilities, it will do five. Let's just set that to two for now, just to not be confused. But um, so what this will do, this will do five instances at once of Chrome and five instances at once of Firefox. So we could have theoretically 10 browser sessions going on at one time with this. The other options you can go to, you can pass to capabilities. I'm not going to go over all of them because that's a video in itself. But with Chrome, you have a Chrome options key here. You can specify like headless and different things like that. You can set the default window size. Firefox does it a little differently. They have the Moz Firefox here. You can specify if you want it headless or not. Most of the time, if you're running it in a continuous integration environment, you want to do headless. Um, else you got to do like virtual display and deal with all that stuff. Um, you can also specify what specs you want to do for that browser if needed. Um, all right, so now that's over. The exec arg v. What this does is this, this will pass down command line options to the child process. So when WebDriver spins up a test and these max instances, each, each instance gets its own child process. So what this does, this will pass down the parameters here to that child process. So sometimes you want to do dash dash inspect, which is the, the, the node debugger. So that'll, that'll pass that option down. Um, there might be some other options that you need, uh, but for the most part, that's how you define all, all the options that will go down to the child process. All right, next, let's go, let's go back to our config file that we've been playing with. All right, sync. So you can do synchronous or asynchronous. We've been doing everything synchronous, which I think that's the correct way to go. So I'm gonna go over the asynchronous. If you were to do an asynchronous, you just have a bunch of awaits in front of all your commands. Um, log directory, where do you want the, instead of having the logs go to, to the console, we specify that they go to the logs directory here. So now we have a bunch of logs in here, different stuff. This is kind of big, so it's just kind of been growing, um, but that's fine. So these, I like, to, I like to have most of all the logs go, the logs go to a file. It's, it's a little bit easier than having to have it all on the terminal. Um, 
So that's where you specify that. Log level, you have, you have a few different levels, trace, debug, info, warn, and error. You can play around with those to see exactly what they all do. Um, but if we did info, we'll get info, warn, and error. If we do trace, we'll get trace, debug. A lot of times if I'm just debugging, I'll put it to trace. Um, if I'm running it through this containers integration system, I might have it as info. Because trace will just give me everything. Um, info might just give me info, warn, and error. I don't need everything. Um, what's next? Deprecation warnings. I'm not sure if this is using V5 anymore. So I would just keep this at true if it is. If you do, if you do have it, um, I won't worry about it. Bail. What bail does is if you have, say you have a suite of 100 tests and maybe there's a network issue. So, or some, someone did a very bad fix or, or implemented a very bad bug. So pretty much every single test fails. So it's just running every test fails and it keeps trying to run every test fails. So that's going to take a long time if it has to do all hundred and they all fail. So you can set this to like 10. So if 10 tests fail, WebDriver will stop and just fail at that point and return, which is good. Like I, I think I default it mainly most of the time to 10. That way, if there's some, just somebody introduces a blatant bug that breaks everything, we just stop at the 10th failure and it'll just put the results back and be like, all right, something, something bad happened. Base URL. Base URL will do is, so that's your base URL. So you might have seen us do like browser.url like this. Well, we could set this to our base URL. Let me just copy this. So let's do, so we could do that. We can just set our base URL like that. And then instead of having to specify this URL every time, we could just specify that. And that would get us to that URL. So then if we wanted to, let's go to here. So that's the same URL. So we've got checkboxes. So if we wanted to open up the checkboxes page, we could just do, do this now. So we don't have to put the full, full URL, which is nice. And then if ever our URL changes, we can, we can do that. All right. That's that. Wait for a timeout. So if you remember from previous videos, we did the wait for exist, wait for displayed and different things like that. We can default that here. And that's what we're doing. So the default is going to be 10 seconds here. So if we don't find an element within or, or find what we needed within 10 seconds, it's going to fail. And this will apply to all the wait for commands. We wanted to change that to 30 maybe. That's fine. So the wait for interval, we have this set to one second. What this will do is it works with the wait for timeout. So the wait for timeout, what will happen is uh, it'll try to find it. If it doesn't find it, it's going to look at this interval, wait a thousand seconds, and then try to find it again. And it'll keep just waiting one second every time. Um, you remember every time it does the wait for timeout, it does a request to the server. So you don't want to set this to like 100 milliseconds. So I like to set it to about a thousand. That way it's just not always hitting, hitting, hitting uh, really fast. Connection retry timeout, not going to go over that too much. I just keep the defaults there, connection retry to three, it's fine. Um, what else? Oh, services. So we haven't really shown you any services. WebDriver has some built-in services that are offered. Uh, let's see. Here we go. So some of the services, DevTools. This allows you to do different things with um, like Chrome DevTools, Sauce Service. So if you want to run the um, integrate with Sauce Labs, you can. Selenium Standalone. Selenium Standalone allows it, makes it easy to run if you want to run Firefox and Chrome at the same time, you can install this. And so if you do install this, you can just npm install it and then 
to use it, all you have to do is specify it here and WebDriver will automatically pick this up. And you can also use custom services. So people, other people outside of the WebDriver IO organization can create services and those are allowed, able to be used here. So you can do a bunch, like I think you can just do sauce if you're using the sauce lab service. So you got sauce here. So services, sauce. So you can specify services there. And you got framework, Mocha, you can use Jasmine or Cucumber. Then you have different reporters. We've been using the spec reporter. There's also some built-in other ones like dot. All dot does is print dots. There's Allure reporter, which can give you like, you can have it generate, um, it, the Allure will generate XML files in the background, I believe. And then you can also generate an HTML file from that, which you can view nice, pretty charts and different things of your reports which you just npm install the, the reporter here. And then you can just add, so you can have multiple reporters, so you can just do, do that. So you'd have to make sure you npm install or yarn install these reporters to use it. But once you have them installed, all you have to do is specify them here. Then you have different Mocha options. We've kind of gone over those a little bit. Default timeout, retries. Um, and then you have a bunch of hooks. I'm not going to get over the hooks in this video. I will go over those in the next video.